Goeiemorgen, dit is so lekker om by te kan te wees vandag. Ek sê vir my vrou vir oogend, yes, kom ons kom, ons kom bykie by uit die kerk uit, jy weet. Um, om in hy lewe banke vast te kyk, is nie een grap nie. Ek, um, ek kyk in hierdie lens vir oogend, dan moet ek vertrouw, jylle sit by die huis en, en, en jylle skakel in. En, uh, maar ek kan jylle nie sien nie. En dan as ek vir beide die lens kyk in die kerk, dan... Um, is daar snaakse ding wat gebeur, jy weet, die banke, kyk terug na my, en die een bank sê vir die ander bank, as ek wonder, waar is die oomie, wat altyd hier so met sy vrou kom, sonda, en, um, en dan sit hy hier so, en soos die dienst aangaan, dan begin hy snork, hier hy snork so lekker, dat my skroewe bewe, die ander bank op die ander kant sê, hy, hey, wacht hier so, stadig, pastoor is bezig om te preek, en, en kan jy nie sien, dis die wegraping, hier is niemand hier, verweke alles hier niemand hier nie. En hier is een bank van achteraf, ek vergeet wat sy bank dit was, maar dat is ons altyd een bank wat, wat sê, ek het jou gesê. En hy sê, ek het jou gesê, as die wegraping kom, is het net die pastoor en sy vrou wat achterblij. Nou ja, ek mis julle allemaal, um, goeiemorgen, dis lieflik om nog steeds te kan bedien, alles die uh, anders er is wat ons gewoond is. This morning, you know, on my heart is, Nice and early, you can hear the fowls crowing and, and, and the wildlife waking up. Um, it's on my heart that, that we should as church pull together and pray for Charles and Trudy and uh, just carry them forward to the Lord in prayer. And then also, you know, we've got lots and lots of people that have closed their businesses. They just shut their businesses down and um, don't know where the next income is. Let's pull together and just pray together for these people this morning. Um, old, uh, Andrew, yes sir, I didn't know you had so many people that love you, my boy. You know, the, the comments came streaming in. It was amazing to see and, and the guys all voted for you having achieved the four plus. So you're going to come back with full score in the mercy of, of the congregation in the wider South Africa. So well done. Um, then just really, honestly, this morning, I want to I want to at the bottom of my heart thank the church. I want to thank the congregation members. I'm not going to call it a small church again because small has got nothing to do with numbers. Small has got to do with heart. And you guys have got a huge heart to continue supporting in, in tough, tough times. Well done. Um, we thank you really, really, very, very, very much. Um, let us just open in prayer this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this crisp morning. Thank you, Father, that you are in control. Thank you, Father, that we can pray a blessing upon everyone watching, that you will be with them wherever they are this morning, in their beds or in front of their TVs, just tuning in, that, that you speak into hearts this morning and that through this, your word will be revealed. Allow everyone just to look beyond us and our attempt, but look into your word. And Father, we pray a preparation in hearts this morning that your word will fall deep and take root in lives. Thank you, Father, that you will supply in tough times. Thank you that you are our Father and we can call out to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you guys can hear, the dogs are preaching with us this morning, so it's fine. We are outside and it is a challenge. Um, just something that I, I want to share with you guys this morning. It came across and I, I read this and this thing, thing impacted me so in Romans chapter 9 verse 11 to 15 we'll just read read the following yet before the twins were born or had anything good or, or had done anything good or bad in order that God's purpose in electing might stand not by works but by him who called she was told the older will serve the younger just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. You see, before these children were born, before they could create any sin, before they could do anything that could justify God turning his back on one or selecting one. He decides and he chooses one of them. 
he selects one even before birth. And this is a trend that we see carrying through the Old Testament, all the way through the generation lines, God selecting one and not selecting another. God chose Joseph above all his brothers, remember that? And God chose Abraham, God chose Moses, God chose Joshua. Remember God choosing David above everyone else. And then I want you also to lean into it and remember the blessing upon these characters' lives, these heroes, these Old Testament heroes' lives. God just blessing them from strength to strength. Yes, they went through persecution, but inevitably they were blessed beyond your imagination and my imagination. You see, God is sovereign and his decision in who to choose is his decision. He says, I will bless who I want to bless. I will choose who I want to choose. I will be gracious to who I will be gracious to. God was gracious to Abel before Cain. He selected Moses above Pharaoh. He selected Peter above Judas, I suppose. God says this morning, no matter what we have done, the choice of selection is up to him. Do you remember when we were at school at break time and, and, and we'd play a game or sport, two teams against each other and they choose two captains and then the captains would choose out people and the good captains would select people, you know, diversified field, not all kickers or batters or bowlers, not all runners, not all goalkeepers, but a diversified, a good captain chooses a diverse team. But remember the joy in being chosen first, that joy, that utmost joy that was there when you were chosen first but remember how it felt if you weren't chosen if you were the last one standing there and you sort of got the idea no one wants me you're just being left out you see in this choosing part there are two outcomes in your heart the one is that you rejoice in the in the game you rejoice in the captain that chose you and the other side is when you're not chosen, you rebel against everything. And you badmouth everything. God is sovereign. This is one thing we must get right. God will do what he wants to do. We cannot will God. In our very being, we can do nothing to will God. Because he stands outside of creation. He is not part of creation. So Paul is writing this letter um, to the Romans and, and no better person to write this letter because you see Paul had been on both sides of this coin. If you remember Paul's life and, and we can start reading in Acts um, at chapter 9 around 9 verse, verse 1. Paul was uttering murderous things out against the Lord's disciples and he'd actually got a letter to say you can persecute these guys and um, chuck them in jail. And so he was en route to Damascus. About a 250 kilometer journey, three, six days walk, uh, three days by a horse. And something happens in this journey. He has an encounter with Jesus in this journey. And, and we can elaborate on his blindness and, and why he was blind. And we can elaborate why he lost all taste for earthly food. He lost his appetite. Um, but that's not the point that I want to get to this morning. I was reading into this and, and, and the blindness had nothing to do with the fall because if he had fallen and become concussed to the point of blindness, he wouldn't have been able to walk. But that, that's something totally different. That's something totally different. So God chooses who he chooses. Before the time he did not choose Paul and then Paul has this meeting with Jesus, a dramatic meeting, and he's a life-changing Paul uttering murderous things out and the next thing preaching Jesus, preaching deliverance. What a change. And what joy we see in Paul being chosen eventually by God Almighty. How would it feel this morning if God knocked on your door with a cup of coffee and said, my child, I choose you. I select you this morning. So God chooses who he chooses. And when there is obedience to the call, there's a prosperous moving into your life, into your called life. John 3.16, we all know that. Listen to the Hardy Das. Um, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And in that calling, 
in God giving his son. That is your calling. And we read in there, whoever believes in him. The part that says believes in him is the part that when you step forward into the called group, that you leave the crowd behind and you move forward into the winning team with God. God giving his son is you qualifying for his team. Ephesians 1.4, if you, if you forget everything, just remember Ephesians 1.4 this morning. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Just drink that in this morning. It's not a long sermon this morning. Just drink that in this morning. And then in Jeremiah 1, 5, God is speaking to Jeremiah and he says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as prophet to the nations. What you need to understand this morning is that you are a creation of God. If you deny that you are a creation of God, that is denying God. God created everything. And God creates everything with a purpose. The sun rising this morning has a purpose. And, and even more, it has a daily purpose. Its purpose isn't for tomorrow or next month or next year. It has a daily purpose. And when you question your purpose, my friend, you are questioning God. You are no ordinary person once you choose to follow God. Can you call Moses ordinary? Can you, can you this morning honestly call David ordinary? Can you call Joseph ordinary? Can you call them ordinary this morning? Are you an ordinary person? And how can it be? How can it be once you've been selected, once you've been chosen by God, that you are like the rest, just an ordinary person? How can that be? Moses, David, Joseph, Jeremiah, Noah, all those legends of the Old Testament didn't have a permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So how, my friends, can you call yourself ordinary this morning? God put us in this time to make a difference. God has called us in this time to make a difference. God hasn't called you for tomorrow to make a difference. It's today to make a difference. In this time. This time is not a time to hide away just to survive this crisis. This time is not a time for you to be crunched to pieces. This time is for you to stand up. This time is for you to take up your godly position. To stand up as Christians. Jesus didn't die on, on, on a cross to make you ordinary. Jesus died on a cross and he, and he counted it worthy that day. And he bled out that day so that you cannot be ordinary ever again. Because he washes you clean with his blood. And you stand redeemed before God this morning. Grasp this please. I struggle with it. You stand before God. Cleanse this morning. So that you can have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit within you. And we need to get serious about this. My friends, this is a serious matter. Because there is a warning written in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. But my righteous, that's us, will live by faith. I cannot see you, but I faith you've tuned in. That's faith. Walking by faith has got to do with the blindness to the world. But my righteous will live by faith. And I will take no pleasure, listen to this, what God says, in the one who shrinks back have you ever considered pleasing god have you ever considered pleasing god not to get anything back from him but pleasing god just to say thank you lord thank you for a new day thank you for choosing me 
it is time for believers to take up their rightful positions. And Afrikaans will like say, kom ons hou op om slap gaat te wees. It is time for us to take up our rightful godly positions which was dearly bought. Otherwise we cheapen the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. It is time for us to stand together and to make a difference. Stop hiding away. It is time for us not to hide away and not to backslide. It is time for us to move forward. It is time for us to take up our God-given authority and stand on what God has designed us for, to be the body of Christ. It is time for us to show the world what a Christian is. My friend, you have been chosen by God. You are God's child. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for choosing every single one of us. Thank you, Father, that in believing in you, we take the step towards you and we have the dramatic change in our lives. Father, thank you that you have called us into movement now so that we can make a difference. Yes, Father, there are people suffering and hurting, Father. Use us, every single one of us, to improve, to increase your kingdom in, in this little town and further abroad. Thank you, Father, for your presence this morning as the sun rises. Thank you, Father, for blessing every single person. Thank you that we can pray for Charles and Trudy this morning. Thank you that we can pray for people that have no income, that have no vision of the future. Father, you are the future. We proclaim it this morning. Thank you. You are the provider, Father. Thank you, Father, that you indwell us. Father, we repent of backsliding this morning. We invite you new, fresh into our lives again. Thank you, Father, that we know you are in control. I thank you all. Please stay safe. Please look after yourselves. Please spend time in the Word. You are a chosen one of God. Amen.